Okay. I'm sure. Tom Foley. I'm Bruno Mark. And I'm uh, Michele Patané. I think it is uh, important to differentiate who you're talking to. I mean, particularly in the corporate world and for branding, you find that if it is a luxury brand that has to communicate to their relative, uh, uh, relative um, customers, they will actually communicate in English in many, in many areas of the world. However, if it's a consumer brand, such as a toothpaste, you will find that the company has to communicate in the local language with the local script. Yeah, personally, I, I think it is going to be more and more relevant to rediscover the local languages and local cultures. It's just part of the yeah. um, of the process of avoiding to make everything in the same way, to communicate in the same way. It's, it's, it's happening, I feel. It is and happening. The uh, question is, you know, who's going to pay for it at the end of the day? You know. Yeah. I, I was wondering if, um, uh, in question of, in terms of market, the the the, the process of uh, creating a new typefaces for uh, minority languages, like what is doing Adobe is doing, for example, mm. is is a, is it could be related to the fact that these markets are kind of becoming richer and richer, and so. There's uh, a market there. So that could be something like. Uh, yeah, I mean, the mm. thing. Well, I think what's interesting about it is that. In order to you know to maintain the culture and the language, it's not just about the typeface. It's it's about what's around the typeface. It's the context. So, what state is the language in? What state is the culture in? Politically, economically, those things are just as important as you know what the typeface is. The typefaces are responding to those contexts and those markets. But if, for instance, in the case of Ireland, for example, Irish is a dying language, as it were. It's it's not as popular as it used to be, and it's not really widely used. Um, and it's not really to do with the lack of useful typefaces for the Irish language, it's, it's supported by the Latin script. It's more to do with um, the education of Irish in schools and the, la and the lack of good education. So mm -hmm. I think that's just as important as the typefaces itself, the context and, and, and the way mm -hmm. the culture is evolving. I think the st there are standards there that are acceptable that are improving all of the time. Depends on who you speak to. Um, different practitioners will have a different view upon it. In terms, you know, particularly when it comes to the shaping of really complex, um, I guess, versions of complex scripts. So, say for Arabic, where you can kind of have some really complex typesetting. Uh, you know, that that's almost sometimes outside of the remit of the kind of standards in some in some cases. But I think what really excites me is actually the typesetting and the use of type in, to get multi different script systems together in the one document or in the one um, piece of ephemera and that's, that's quite interesting because the tools are now coming of age where you can actually typeset different script systems together in a kind of typographically appropriate way. That's I mean, it's quite interesting. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel that w we did a like, huge improvement in uh, supporting uh, different scripts but I'm sure we are still suffering the legacy of the Latin-centric uh, uh, origin of these tools. Because uh, if we think about uh, so Microsoft, Apple, and uh, Adobe are all uh, corporations that are clearly Western-based, and they are catching up with uh, what is changing in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, it's it's they're doing uh, an effort, and uh, we. We're doing an effort uh, dealing with this effort. Mm -hmm. uh, it's part of uh, the process of uh, enlarging the, the, the scope of. Uh, yeah. I do think you know that the tools, and I would I would wish to want to see an overhaul of the tools of the tools, mm -hmm. uh, one that is more geared toward collaborative working. In that, as you're having to start adding the complex scripts you're increasing the character sets, mm -hmm. which means all of a sudden instead of 200 or 300 characters, you already, already have to, to design 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 characters. And two or three people 
simply cannot uh, do that anymore. So you need to have tools by which you can collaborate with mm -hmm. and that you can actually start creating parallel working, working processes. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see, say, online-based tools where two or three people can work on the same character at the same time. Mm -hmm. Almost like, you know, Google Doc-based yeah. kind of thing. I mean, how in reality that works, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but but it, it should be it should be something like that, you know. And then I think then it actually becomes a reality that you can create multiscript fonts more efficiently. Just call them by the script names: yeah. Arabic, Devanagari, Bengali. And then when it comes to a large-scale project, it's a multiscript project. And by definition, multiscript is complex, so you can't get away from that connection with the complexity in script systems. So. Actually, I quite like that definition. Yeah. Multiscript. Yeah. Multiscript. Yeah. Because then it, it takes the emphasis away from uh, Latin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I agree with, with both of you. I think that uh, I tend to name the script uh, and uh, to refer to it in an abstract way as a writing system. So I don't just I try to avoid the, 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 to use a non-Latin Now, of course, best would be if everyone speaks English. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe, the, maybe the British Empire didn't course. last long yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> the Bruno Empire is next. Yeah, the Bruno Empire. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's going to be Schweizer Deutsch. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>